So you get your wake up call. You start looking at yeah. your life a little different. I gotta yeah. make some, I gotta make some changes. Yeah. Service. How does that come up? Because yeah, man. Your, your brother is is following in the, in the footsteps of your mom, following the footsteps of yeah. your dad. Yeah, yeah. You are clearly taking a whole different route. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I don't know yeah. if education was was yeah. your primary focus at that time. Nah, I wasn't. Why the service? Well, yeah, that's a question I asked myself multiple times. It's there's so much more to the story, but it was June of 2002. I was I was lying in my bed, and I literally hear this voice speak to me. It sounds crazy, but I hear this voice speak to me. This voice says, "You need to get out of here. You need to join the military." I'm not making this up. I wasn't high. I wasn't drunk. I was wide awake. I, I wasn't I wasn't wide awake. I was in that. That, that state of being partially asleep, but laying there, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Before you go further, at this point, mm -hmm. are you looking for something? Are you, uh, are you desperate for what's my nah. No? No, no, my mom would come in my room every day and be like, you need to get a job. I ain't taking care of no grown man. <laughs> and after making a type of money that I made, it was hard for me to go back to a sneaker store. You know what I'm saying? After making, I, I made so much money, it was hard for me to go work in McDonald's or go work as a guard. I, I, my pride wouldn't allow me to do go from here in my mind down to here, mm -hmm. especially with all of the people that I was running with and knew me. And they like, Remy's working at McDonald's? I couldn't live with that. <laughs> I couldn't live with that, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not knocking anybody to work at McDonald's, but that was just my mindset at that time. And so I wasn't really looking for nothing. I, I was just, I was, in reality, I was trying to make this work. Like, up to, I was still trying to make this work. As a matter of fact, I got a meeting with Kevin Lyles and Def Jam. Okay. Yeah. I got, I, I got a meeting with Kevin Lyles and Def Jam, play him the compilation album. Oh, you appreciate this. I'll never forget this. Because this DJ who was making beats for us, he took us to the Def Jam offices on the west side. Uh, like it's like 55th Street somewhere yep, around 8th there. Avenue. 8th, 8th Avenue. Yeah, 8th yeah. Avenue. And we go into the building and I had so much hope because we were getting in front of somebody and we go in, we go upstairs, we go into Kevin Lyle's office and you know, it was so surreal because this was where I wanted to be and he's like, all right, let's play the music and see how, how, how it works, play how it plays. I played the music for him, he's nodding, he's listening, he's nodding. He goes about three songs in and he stops it He's like, ah, oh, it's not for us. But if you want to hear something that's legit, that's going to pop, it's going to be real, like, listen to this. I just signed this dude. And he puts in the Joe Budden CD. <laughs> this is before no, anybody knew what Joe Budden is. And the whole time I'm listening, I'm hot. Because I'm like, this was my last opportunity. This dude just said he ain't with my music and now he playing some dude named Joe I don't even trying to hit nobody dude and uh, he played the music and then he, you know he was like, I have a good luck and that's what it, it, but even after that meeting I was still pushing because I wanted to make it I, I like I wanted to make it I wanted to be successful and so in the music business and so for me, that was my focus. So when my mom was coming in my room, she knew that was still my focus. That's why she was like, you need to get a job. So I'm, laying, I'm lying in my bed, kind of half asleep, half awake, and I hear this voice say, you need to get out of here, you need to join the military. Prop myself up in the bed, I look around, nobody's there, TV's not on, I'm like, where did that come from? And then I begin to look around my room, that same room that I was in when I was eight years old, and, my, and I re finally realized my dad was gone. And I said to my man, I said to myself, man, what else is my life of knowledge? Nothing. And then this battle began to wage within my mind. I was like, military. I like my clothes baggy, my ass backwards. I hate authority. I hated the police. I associated anybody in the uniform as, as the police. So the military was the police to me. You know, I, I didn't like authority. I didn't want to have nothing to do with the military. I saw the military as it's oppressive you know, community that goes around to other countries and oppress people and steal their stuff and all that. And so I didn't want to have nothing to do with the military. And so I began to really fight with myself. And then finally I said, you know what? Screw it, whatever. Let's just go see what happens. Let's just go see. You ain't got nothing else you're doing. Let's go see. 
And so I walked down Fordham Road and uh, I went past the Grand Concourse. There was a recruiting station and then and I went upstairs and the first thing I did was I was like, all right, if I'm going to, if I'm going to join the Navy, I'm, I'm military, I'm going to go to the hardest thing. So I was like, I'm going to go to the Marine Corps. Let's see what the Marine Corps got. So I go in the Marine Corps office. I sit there for 15 minutes. There's coffee on the desk. After 15 minutes, I get up, I walk next door to the uh, uh, Air Force. Yeah. Go back just a little bit because your, your, your internet is breaking up a little bit. Oh my bad, my bad. So you um, said you said you 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 if you're gonna join the military, you're gonna go to the hardest one. And so you yeah, walk yeah. into the Marine office. Yeah, I walk into the Marine office, I sit there for 15 minutes, there's coffee on the desk, nobody in there. After 15 minutes, I get up, I leave, I walk next door. I think it was like the Coast Guard or Army or whatever. It wasn't interested in that. And then I went two doors down to the Navy recruiter's office. I walk into the Navy recruiter's office, it's gorgeous Puerto Rican Navy for recruiter. Gorgeous. Her name is Tiana Reyes. Never forget. In my mind, I'm like, damn, man, she fine. Like, oh, we're in the Navy. I'm in it to win it, man. <laughs> and I ain't just going to get in the Navy. I'm going to make my girl tell her about my record company. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm over here trying to squat. And she's like, this fool. Get this, this dude that he is trying to get. And she was from the Bronx. She was from the Bronx. She just came back after doing her tours to work at the recruiter's office. And so um, she was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, yeah, I heard about this Navy SEAL thing. I'm going to be a Navy SEAL. She was like, yeah, whatever. Get your skin, but you ain't going to be no Navy SEAL. <laughs> so she makes me do a practice ASVAB test. I do that test. Um, I pass, which means I qualify enough to get in the Navy, but I don't qualify to be a SEAL. You got to score really high to get to become a SEAL. And then Stop right there for a second. Yeah. When you walk into that office, before you even get into the Navy, yeah. In your head, you're thinking, if I do make it into the service, into into the Navy, I'm going to yeah. become a SEAL? I want to be a SEAL. Because really? in my mind, yeah, because in my mind, it's like, record mogul, Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> like, I ain't coming back to the BX saying I'm, I'm a Navy SEAL on the ship, not knocking that, but if I come back to the Bronx, i am be like, yeah, I ain't making this. Well, I came back as a SEAL. I'll be like, yeah, I was a SEAL. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be part of the best. You know what I mean? And my mom, again, she always taught, preached to me excellence. Remember, right? whatever you do, you got to do it excellence. You got to write the first time. And I knew that being a Navy SEAL was excellence personified. You know what I'm saying? And so, long story short, I chose that. But the second thing she did was she ran my background. When she ran my background check, she found out I had two warrants out for my arrest. Did you know you had those warrants? I didn't know I had warrants. I didn't know I had warrants. I didn't know. So when she said that, I had a warrant in New Jersey and I had a warrant in New York. I didn't even know I had one. I didn't know what they were for. I didn't know nothing. I had gotten, well, I eventually found out. So you're still sitting in the recruiting office I'm right now. still in the office. But I get up and I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And right before I got to the door, she stopped me. She said, where you going? I was like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I'm trying to get locked up today. Let me at least go back to my mom's and then I can figure this out. And she was like, stop, don't do that. I was like, what? She's like, stop, stay with stay, me. Stay. And she said, do you have a suit? I said, no, I don't have a suit. What you talking about? I ain't trying to go to no court. She said, do you have a collar shirt and some nice pants? I said, yeah, why? She said, come back tomorrow. I said, for what? She said, just come back tomorrow. I was like, all right. Came back the next day. She was in her dress uniform, military dress uniform. I was in my collar shirt. She said, come with me. So I get in a government car with her. And she drives me all the way to New Jersey. And she, she gets to the front of the line. And whatever she does, she get into the court. She gets me in front of the judge. Pretty much to turn me in, but also try and plead my case. And she says to the judge, listen, 9-11 just happened nine months earlier. This kid, he's made mistakes, but he still has potential. He's trying to turn over a new leaf. He's trying to do the right thing. Can you please expunge his record? I cannot let him in the Navy with a warrants, let alone a record. That judge said, if this dude is serious about turning his life around, especially after 9-11, yes, I will expunge his record. Record expunge. Takes me to New York, does the same thing. The judge is like, I'll expunge his record. He just has to pay the court fees and court fines. Done. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.